Good afternoon, uh, Honorable Mimang, uh, Honorable uh, Deputy M, and uh, uh, Honorable Shof, uh, officials from Parliament and officials from the department. Uh, I was talking to the committee secretary that perhaps we give it uh, just another 10 minutes because at the time it was only myself and uh, Honorable uh, uh, Moimank. Um, the committee secretary is still following up on uh, other members uh, before we start. So we'll give it, uh, I'm sure it's uh, now maybe seven minutes uh, before we actually start. I've joined Chair. Uh, th thanks, uh, Honorable Bishop. Welcome. Let me try to locate Mr. Langsman. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, he'll join us. Yeah. But he was not part of the plenary. I doubt if you'll join the committee. Hi, Chi. We've got sufficient members, Chi. Oh, no, that's right. Okay, then we can we can start uh, with our meeting. Um, let me take this opportunity to welcome uh, honorable members uh, of the committee. Uh, greetings to the Minister uh, of Tourism, uh, uh, Deputy Minister. Of tourism, uh, see uh, the DG uh, of the department and uh, all the officials of the department uh, of tourism. And uh, we just had a challenge of uh, we started with the plenary today, uh, this morning, uh, 
uh, sometimes it affects then the afternoon committee meetings. Um, nevertheless, the, we have sufficient numbers. Um, I will first ask then the committee secretary to indicate who is uh, part of the meeting uh, from Emma's side. Uh, yeah. Okay. Over to you. Uh, thanks, Chi. Um, in terms of members who are present, we've got Honorable Moiman, Honorable Boshoff, Honorable Akleni, Honorable Dango. Um, yes, I think those are the members, in case I missed anybody. So in total, we should have five members present right now, Chi. And then in terms of apologies, we've got Honorable Mamarahane, Honorable Lant, and Honorable Matavula. Okay, no, thank you very much. Um, the, let me again take this opportunity to welcome uh, everybody. And uh, this is a first meeting in our second term. Uh, we're starting uh, with the tabling of the annual performance plans uh, for all the departments that report uh, to the committee. There are about uh, four uh, departments. It's a uh, Department of Tourism, uh, Trade, Industry, and Competition, uh, Small Business Development, uh, and uh, Employment and Labor. So the first one is uh, a Department of Tourism. Uh, we will then again schedule uh, another meeting uh, to adopt uh, the report uh, of the APP so that we are able then to, to have a a budget for debate. Uh, the ministry has already confirmed the date of the 1st of June. Uh, so on the 1st of June, we'll be debating uh, the budget uh, of uh, the Department of Tourism. Uh, let me again welcome the minister and deputy minister and the uh, uh, DG. Um, I will then hand over to you uh, Honorable uh, Minister, I know it was your birthday on Saturday. I uh, wish you another uh, 12 months uh, of success and uh, all the best uh, to you. Over to you, uh, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, Chairperson, Honorable Chair, Hai, Honorable Members. Um, I do would like, as, as we are doing this week and on the budget votes, the GM has been leading the discussions. I come in with the team, so I'd like to request the GM to lead in the opening remarks. I'll come in as part of the delegation as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Honorable uh, Marshall, over to you. Thanks very much and, and, and good afternoon uh, to you, Chair, and the Honourable Members. Uh, the Minister, the DG and the team. Uh, there's too uh, much uh, light, uh, 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 Deputy uh, DM. I think that it's your too picture, much light, it's, no? it's affecting your, your picture. Okay, Chair. That's uh, much better. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you very much. Uh, as I was, I was, I was extending my greetings to yourself as the chair and the honourable members, the minister. Uh, the DG and, and, and the entire staff uh, uh, led by the DG. We, we are, Chairperson, uh, presenting this, uh, this annual performance uh, uh, plan uh, and the budget. Uh, under a, the tourism operating environment, which has fundamentally changed because of the severe disruptions by, by the pandemic. 
uh, as we all are aware that the international market was, as a result of the pandemic, highly disrupted and is likely to remain impacted in, uh, because of the continuous new development and the way how the pandemic is, is evolving, uh, as well as the travel behavior and the extent to which we are able to, to make sure that we, we, we keep a, a pre, pre, present a situation of a confident and safer environment. And we believe that it will all depend on the extent to which as a country and as the world, not just South Africa, uh, we are able to cap the virus. Uh, we are able to reduce the spread uh, so that we are able to build confidence to the travelers to be able to travel. Uh, domestic demand is, is also under very strain due to the impact of the pandemic. A, a, a has on disposable income. A, as I've indicated, uncertainty still remains a core characterization of the changing environment. A, we as a department arising from this pandemic, we have then developed a tourism a, sector recovery plan as a response to to, to this a, a catastrophic environment that is prevailed. We then developed the plan a, informed or based on the a government is called economic reconstruction and recovery in plan the ER. This tourism sector recovery plan, its main intention is to make sure that we ignite the tourism sector, place it on the path of a long-term sustainability. Uh, while doing that, we'll then, as I've indicated, be contributing towards the economic reconstruction and recovery plan. Linked to this ERP, uh, which tourism will make a contribution, is the infrastructure. Uh, we are, according to the plan, we will present it having projects that will be making an intervention into the infrastructure, especially into our, into our national parks. A, one of the contributions is also mass public in, in employment. A, there are various programs that the APP a, that deals with mass a, in public employment a, in, the, in the context of EPWP and, 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 and other programs. And then we have got a key to the plan, it's your skills development, which will be engaging on various skill development to try and build this capacity uh, of the sector to be able to, to have the enough workforce that is required by the market. And then lastly, the issue of gender equality, which is inclusive of empowerment of women and youth and people with disability. So these are some of the things, interventions, therefore, that the, the plan will try to do uh, as part of a, the, this, the, this APP that we will be presenting. We are also uh, underway to review the tourism policy, as you, you know, Chair, we, we promise that we are undergoing a process of the review of the policy. The minister last year 
appointed in a, an advisory panel, uh, which, which is reviewing the policy, which will then culminate in the development of a new policy framework that will make sure that we deliver efficient and effective and purpose-led support for sector growth and development. The plan a, that is the, the tourism a, a, the tourism sector recovery plan a, is based on three pillars, a, which are pillars that are interlinked and interrelated to each other. A, 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 and therefore we'll be using these a, to make sure that we, we protect and rejuvenate supply, we reignite demand and strengthen energy capacity. As part of this recovery, a, we are saying we must use the domestic demand or market as the anchor for the, for the recovery which will then be a, a followed by regional and then once the market, international market is open, we're able to make sure that we, 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 we will expand to the international market. As you know, we, we were restricted because of various countries are also undergoing various lockdowns of one form or another. And therefore, the international market is, is, is currently not available as a result of that. Uh, but we, uh, we are working to make sure that we are always on not being forgotten in those markets. Uh, the team is always uh, make sure that the messages are also uh, um, are broadcast and, and, and made available to all the countries that uh, are our key market. So that uh, by the time the market is open, uh, we are able to make sure that we attract uh, 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 our, our international market to come back uh, uh, to South Africa. As, 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 we, as we engage in this recovery plan, fundamental to it is that uh, uh, it must come back a, in a big bang, a faster, but in a more transformed way. A, we must make sure that as the sector as the sector recovers, it recovers fundamentally in a way, in a manner that take into consideration that it must be inclusive, it must contribute to growth, it must contribute to the development of South Africa and ordinary people of South Africa and it must expand its beneficiations to people in the townships and the rural areas so that we are able to deal with the challenges that are confronted with the country of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. And we believe that tourism has got a potential to contribute fundamentally towards a closing the gap between the heads and the heads. It's got the fundamental contribution to make to bridge the existence of two nations in one country. So these are some of the things that we think tourism will have the potential to do as we work towards its recovery, a, a working together with, 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 with the private sector and civil society and municipalities because we realize that in most instances municipalities have not been prioritizing uh, tourism as a key economic sector. We are engaging municipalities around this matter so that within the context of the district development model, so that we make sure that uh, uh, it's taken as one of the key sectors that must be prioritized by municipalities. Uh, and, and, and therefore, make it necessary that we create an environment that will, will, will make sure that there is accessibility uh, into various products that are available in those municipalities. 
by creating conducive environment of investment uh, and production. So that's generally the, the, the opening remarks in chair that uh, I can make. As the minister has indicated, uh, we will, 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 I will hand back to her so that then she give us guidance in terms of how then do we proceed going forward. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable GM. Uh, back to you, uh, Honorable Minister. I don't know you, if you want to come in at this stage or we hand over to the DG. No, I'm sure we can proceed. Let's allow the presentation. Okay. Yes. Okay, then you'll come back as a part of the responses. Eh? The question. Yes, okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, DG. Uh, DG, yes, I'll give, thank you, Honorable uh, Chairperson. And uh, I'll give the presentation uh, one hour. I know you got uh, four programs, so it would be fifteen each. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chairperson, Hi, and uh, Honorable Members, and uh, Minister and uh, DM, as well as the colleagues. Uh, <clears throat> Honorable Chairperson, we, the DM has introduced the, the, the overall presentation. So what I'm going to ask is that the colleagues, uh, the DDGs, go uh, through the, the, their, their respective programs, and we don't deal with the first part. Um, the CFO will deal with uh, the financial part, then I will come back to highlight some of the risks that face the, the overall plan. We will start with uh, DDG, acting DDG uh, Blessing Manale, who is uh, acting in program one, and then we'll move on to the DDGs uh, in, the, in the respective programs. Thank you very much, Alam Thank you very much. Can we start then with corporate management? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, Minister, Deputy Minister, and Chair and colleagues. Uh, yeah. I will make sure that I stick to the time as, as per the Chair's instructions. Um, uh, corporate uh, management program includes um, seven areas, which is audit, HR, legal communications, Office of the Director General, strategy and systems, as well as finance. And uh, we've got about 12 output indicators and outputs uh, which makes the engine to be able to enable the organization to carry out its core uh, uh, members and chair. Uh, in, and I'll quickly go through those output. The first one is uh, unqualified annual audit, both financial and non-financial. And uh, the key deliverables there is to make sure that we submit the, all the required document to Treasury and the AXA on time, as well as continuously do an audit uh, implementation plan and uh, review the internal control measures. Uh, where we had, uh, we had slipped, but where we also need to strengthen. In terms of output two, it's about the vacancy rate. We need to continue to manage that vacancy rate of 10% uh, of the establishment, and we've got to do that in the constraints of a, of a shrinking fiscal environment uh, uh, of, uh, of the cost of employment, and the CFO will briefly speak to that. Target uh, output three is about... Uh, Compliance with equity targets, we've, we've set ourselves 50% for women across uh, all the quarters and uh, with uh, 3% for people with disabilities and then a 91.5% uh, for black representation uh, uh, for that uh, uh, compliance with equity targets. In terms of uh, skills, we've uh, set up our, our target to implement our entire annual work, uh, workplace skills plan and uh, we've spread out those uh, deliverables per quarter. But, uh, we don't uh, need to underachieve one of our skills uh, interventions internal corporate wise. Output indicator five speaks about the annual internal audit plan. We develop an audit plan so that our audit is aligned to the internal and external processes. And uh, we always, uh, the target is to make sure that that plan is uh, implemented fully uh, in this uh, uh, annual uh, uh, APP. And then output indicator five, it's about the communication strategy and an awareness and campaigns. We would implement the entire communication strategy and key to that it's international and domestic media, the work around the district development uh, model outreach, as well as uh, a lot of work around the recovery work, the economic, cost, I mean, the, the tourism sector recovery plan and uh, campaigns linked to the holiday seasons 
so that we support our marketing agency. And then in terms of output in K-7, it continues to be the communication strategy and annually we'll review that strategy after the budget speech, after the state of the nation address, so that our communication speaks to the national priorities annually. Uh, through through this process. Then we've got output indicator seven, which speaks about procurement of goods and services uh, for BEE. And uh, we we'll say that uh, from our own spend, we will maintain 100% uh, of, uh, of our expenditure will be in compliance with BEE for being enterprises with the minimum 30% uh, for procurement from uh, for goods and services from small, medium and micro enterprises. And then um, in terms of uh, using our our uh, spending muscle as the state would want to also engage in a number of in, uh, initiatives to directly support our sector so that charity can begin at home. And that we're speaking of targeted procurement for venues, conferences to support events to make sure that our money is spent there. So we'll do that. In terms of how to uh, uh, nine, uh, the percentage of invoices paid within prescribed time frames, which is the 30 days, including now under a lot of economic three. An extra day of an unpaid uh, invoice is too much for uh, enterprises. Uh, our last, um, second last target is about uh, youth through our interns, uh, making sure that we take care of the disability in our organization, uh, as well as uh, diversity management. We've got those targets there, including the implementation of a job access strategy for, for the department. Uh, output 11, um, it is the number of uh, initiatives around gender equity, including uh, the departmental women's month program as targeted programs. We've got a very uh, dynamic gender forum, as well as uh, a sexual harassment policy, which we continue to workshop and make sure that it's implemented, uh, uh, chair and members. And I think uh, the last output indicator is uh, the number of initiatives to promote integrity and ethical conduct that relates to the gift policy, um, the work we do through the risk management committee, as well as the anti-corruption awareness, um, uh, but most importantly, making sure that our senior managers and uh, middle managers that are required by law to declare their interest do that on time within the specified uh, prescribed times. Uh, uh, chair. And that concludes uh, the 12 output indicators and outputs uh, from uh, corporate management. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Minister and colleagues. Thank you very much. Uh, the next <clears throat> program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Minister, DM and colleagues. Um, I will do the presentation for program two, which is tourism research policy and international relations. Um, this uh, branch also has a sub um, units, um, knowledge management, monitoring and evaluation and, and uh, entity oversight. We have um, to align to uh, Blessing's presentation. We have six output indicators in the branch and around 26 um, targets um, for, for the year. Our first indicator um, on slide 23 speaks to the number of monitoring and evaluation reports that we produced and we have targeted nine. Um, the first one speaks to the um, state of tourism report that we um, develop and, and publish every year. So we will continue to, to do that. The second uh, uh, target speaks to the monitoring of the implementation of the norms and standards for safe operation in the sector. Uh, honorable members might recall that we have published the norms and standards for comments. And um, once that is um, started to be implemented, um, we, will, we will monitor the implementation from our side. Then we are also targeting two uh, reports on the impact uh, evaluation of, of COVID on, on the tourism sector. In the previous financial year, we did uh, do three reports, but we also are targeting two additional um, reports for, for the current financial year. Um, our our sec section or our branch is also responsible for the monitoring of the implementation of the tourism sector recovery plan. As um, Deputy Minister indicated, uh, the Tourism Sector Recovery Plan was approved by, by Cabinet. 
and it is uh, our our role um, to to um, develop uh, quarterly reports on on implementation of of the recovery plan. We also um, develop implement uh, implementation report on the national tourism sector strategy. Uh, then our second um, output indicator. Um, speaks to the number of initiatives implemented to create an enabling policy regulatory environment for tourism growth and development. Um, it also uh, links to um, what the Deputy Minister uh, indicated in his opening remarks uh, in terms of the review of the tourism policy. And our target is to have the green paper on the development and promotion of, of tourism in South Africa um, ready by, by the end of the financial year. Then as part of, of governance, uh, we are developing four reports on the governance and performance of, of our entity, South African Tourism, as part of our oversight um, responsibilities. And that was uh, then also linking to output indicator three. Output indicator number four speaks to our knowledge information and knowledge um, systems that we develop and implement, uh, which we have two targets or two systems that we are targeting. The first is an integrated tourism knowledge um, system that we want to implement. Uh, and the second one is the data collection and verification um, of the uh, conducted in line with the National Tourism Information Management System regulations. And that is the project that we started in the previous financial year and that we want to conclude in this financial year. Our um, fifth uh, output indicator speaks to um, our multilateral um, engagements um, and, and the platform, uh, the, uh, the fora that we are prioritizing to advance our South Africa's tourism interest. Um, we are targeting uh, the G20, SADC, the AU, BRICS, the UNWTO and, and the Indian Ocean Rim Association. Um, within in the G20, we uh, will develop a report in terms of our participation, um, in, in terms of the development of the G20 guidelines for resilient, sustainable and inclusive tourism. In terms of SADC, um, we will develop our report on the development of, of our participation in the development of SADC, of the SADC costed um, action plan for, for the tourism program within the region. Within BRICS, um, it's, our, it's uh, the, the, the work that we are doing together with our partners in institutionalizing tourism within BRICS. Um, and then the same within the UNWTO and within the AU, we are developing um, together with our, our partners um, a feasibility study for the African Tourism um, Association. And then within Aura, it's the implementation of the tourism work plan. Just key to indicate that within all these platforms that I mentioned, tourism has been lifted as a, as a key sector for, for the development of, of or for, the, for contribution to economic growth and job creation. Then in terms of our um, uh, bilateral um, and uh, in terms of our regional integration, we are um, targeting a number, in, in, uh, which is four of outreach programs to the diplomatic community um, with specific purpose, especially noting the consequences of, of the COVID environment. So they will be quarterly ones. Thank you. Thank you very much, honorable chair and honorable members. Um, I'm handing over to DDG Chetia for program three. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Honourable Chair um, and Honourable Members, um, Minister, DM and colleagues. I'm going to take you through the Destination Development Program. Um, this branch works in the space of tourism spaces, uh, places, physical infrastructure, route development, and essentially takes ideas and, and um, test them to pre-feasibility studies and feasibility studies 
and helps to find money to make those ideas materialize and then also is responsible for implementing the Working for Tourism program. Um, this year we have nine indicators and these are of course aligned to the strategic pillar of um, protecting and rejuvenating tourism supply that's contained in the tourism recovery plan and the economic reconstruction um, and recovery plan. The first indicator is the work that we're doing on creating an affordable budget resort network um, and brand concept um, for South Africa. And this year we are in fact going to pilot that um, across, the, across the country using different types of um, establishments, some community owned, some state owned and some privately owned that want to become part of this network. Um, the next target then is related to the work that we have been doing over the last two years on creating tourism spatial master plans for various regions in South Africa. Uh, these are of course the OR Tambo district, which is in um, the Eastern Cape, but the master plan stretches all the way from Coffee Bay to all the way down the coastline towards Durban. Um, um, the other uh, piece of work that we've been doing, of course, is in the Northern Cape, where we've developed uh, master plans for Hondekip Bay, um, Carnarvon to Sutherland, um, and the Orange River Mark to Fjolds Drift. So what we're doing this year is taking the information out of those tourism spatial master plans and incorporating them into the district development plans for four districts. That's the OR Tambo district, um, which of course is in the Eastern Cape, Etuguini, which is in KwaZulu Natal, and the Pixley Kaseme, uh, and the Makwa districts, which are both in the Northern Cape. Um, next slide. The next three indicators then talk to the work that we are doing in the investment space. And within the space, we are dealing with both Greenfield, which is new projects, we're also dealing with brownfield projects that are existing projects that require support, particularly those that are distressed during the COVID period. And then the last indicator that we deal with in this area of work is related to um, our um, platforms that actually, um, where we showcase the various projects in both brownfield and greenfield across the country in order to attract investors. Next slide, please. Um, within the, the space of destination enhancement and in line with supporting um, the rejuvenation of tourism supply, we are working across a hundred different project sites um, in, in, in the country. Um, mm. The first set of project sites then are, are the 19 national parks. Um, these are located, of course, in all provinces, with the exception of Gauteng and the uh, KwaZulu-Natal, and we're doing a maintenance program in, in, in those uh, parks. Um, we're expanding then, if we go to the next slide, our maintenance program to look at uh, state-owned assets in various provinces. And we're going to run a maintenance program then in each of the nine provinces, looking at key tourism assets and ensuring that they are fit for purpose when the, when the tourism sector fully reopens to the, to the international community um, and, and accepts visitors. Um, the third then set of work that we're doing in this area of work is to actually support the implementation of 30 community-based tourism projects. Again, these projects are located across the country um, and, and as indicated in the slide and the, the next slide. And these are various projects where we are in fact completing work on community museums, um, or on accommodation establishments, um, or on, on hiking trails, for example, um, in, in these 30 projects across the country. The last slide then talks to the work that we are doing across various branches in our expanded public works program. And this is the work opportunities target. This target is achieved through work that's being done in the infrastructure space, 
but also work that is being done in skills development and the tourism monitors, which DDG Satwaba will talk to in a little bit, um, as well as work that's being done uh, on data collection, which is in DDG Milan's branch. Uh, thank you very much, honorable members. That concludes my presentation. I'm handing over now to DDG Satwaba. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, TTT uh, Shamila. Uh, good afternoon, Chairperson and Honorable Members. Good afternoon, uh, Minister and GM, uh, my colleagues, including the, 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 the DG in the, in, the, in the department and um, uh, parliamentarian staff. Uh, good afternoon. I'm, I'm going to be taking you through program four, which is tourism sector support services. Uh, which continues uh, really to enhance uh, the transformation of the sector, uh, seeks to increase skills levels and also to support developments to ensure that uh, South Africa uh, remains a competitive uh, uh, tourism destination. Uh, the, pro the, 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 the program is made up of, um, we have packaged our work in terms of four units, which is the enterprise development and transformation uh, there is the TIP, which is the, um, uh, the, 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 the section that manages the implementation of our incentive funds. There's tourism uh, sector visitor uh, services, including tourism sector human resource development. On the output, which is to accelerate transformation of the sector, in terms of the incentive programs, we will implement uh, two incentive programs, which is and the Tourism Equity Fund, in, and, and the other one will be the Green Tourism Incentive Programs. These are uh, programs that, uh, especially the uh, GTIP, which is um, uh, ongoing, it's been a while that we have um, started uh, conceptualizing it and uh, is, is currently in the implementation stage as well. Next slide. On the side of uh, stimulating domestic tourism, uh, we will proceed with the implementation of the domestic tourism scheme um, uh, to make sure that there's awareness in terms of our fellow South Africans uh, and the rejuvenation to ensure that um, they travel the, 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 the country and we want to inculcate the culture of travel to also support um, a, a tourism so that they, we can be able to grow the, the economy. Um, the support that we will give to SMME to increase uh, their particip participation so that we can attain inclusive economic growth. Uh, we, 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 we have um, uh, incubation programs uh, that we are uh, targeting SMMEs for. Um, members will remember that um, uh, the, some of them are, are not new incubation programs that we will be starting, like the Manieleti one, Palaborwa, and Mir. Um, the, for this current financial year, they will be in their final uh, year of implementation. The Tech Incubator Technology Innovation Incubator, together with the uh, the tour operator and the food services incubator. We are kickstarting them seriously uh, this financial year. We have also added two incubation uh, programs that are uh, meant for uh, enterprises in the, across, across the country. The next slide. Uh, that will be how we will be implementing them across the, 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 the quarters of, 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 of the year. On the side of increasing participation of, of, of women and driving uh, inclusive economic growth, there are two programs that we will be targeting uh, women in the sector. The first one is the Women in Tourism Business Development. We will be focusing on 225 women uh, for business development uh, and support programs, um, meaning 25 women uh, per, per province. Women Enterprises, that is a chairperson. Next slide. The second one uh, that will be targeting uh, participation of women, increasing participation of women will be the UNWTO Women in Tourism Pilot. We are uh, just about to conclude on the uh, situation and analysis that we, we, have, we have done. We will be 
um, uh, rolling out the, 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 the program. This is the program that is aimed at increasing uh, the skills and also um, uh, the, 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 the latitude of women to be able to uh, participate uh, meaningfully in the, in, in the sector. And we are, um, the, the Mopani one, the, 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 the one that is with the UNWTO, the pilot phase will begin in Vembe and Mopani district uh, in Limpopo. Next slide. To ensure that we enhance visitor services and, 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 and experience, we will continue with the implementation of the service excellence program. This is um, um, the, the norms and standards for service excellence have been with us for quite some time now, and we're going across uh, provinces to ensure that um, the, the level of services that we are uh, providing within the sector is up to the required uh, uh, standard. This year, we will be targeting the Northern Cape. In Limpopo, we are working with um, uh, stakeholders um, in the provinces to ensure that we identify gaps in terms of the service level and also how to uh, make sure that um, uh, there's awareness of the service excellence and also that uh, implementation uh, 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 kickstarts in all the provinces. But this, as I was saying, this term we will be uh, concentrating on the two um, uh, uh, provinces. We will also be implementing the tourism monitors program uh, across the nine provinces, including at Sanbi. Sun Parks and Isi Mangaliso. This is a drive for, 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 for safety, but using the um, EPWP vehicle that um, DDG Tetia was, 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 was talking about. And this year, uh, honorable members, we, are, we have repurposed the, the program to include uh, the tourism monitors uh, being trained on monitoring compliance of the uh, norms and standards. Uh, for the safe operation of um, uh, tourism uh, during uh, COVID and, 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 and beyond. So the scope of, of, of training has been increased uh, to afford them the opportunity to be able to assist us with compliance issues. Uh, in terms of enhancing uh, skills in the sector, the tourist guides, uh, we will offer one program to, cap to capacitate um, a tourist guides. Uh, uh, we are focusing, we've just concluded uh, early this year, um, uh, the, the Mandarin uh, language training. We are now focusing on the Northwest, Northern Cape and First State and this project in terms of the needs for capacity uh, a, a building for tourist guides will depend largely on the recovery uh, plan to ensure that um, uh, our, our, our tourist guides are ready to, to be able to um, to, 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 to show uh, visitors, um, be they from overseas or from uh, uh, internally or domestically, for them to be able to uh, show the beauty of our country. Um, uh, there, there will be um, uh, the Food Safety Quality Assurance Program. Um, all of the capacity building programs, the skills programs uh, have been repurposed to ensure that um, uh, the, the, the learners or what we will normally call the beneficiaries will be trained on uh, the COVID-19 protocols and the norms and standards. So the food safety quality assurance will, will, will include uh, that kind of training. We are looking at uh, 300 unemployed and retrenched youth. Um, previously, we were concentrating on unemployed youth, but now we are going to be including retrenched um, a youth in the, in, in, in the training uh, program. The Food Safety Quality Assurance Program will, 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 will concentrate on KZN, uh, the Western Cape and, 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 and Gauti. The Chef's Professional Cookery also will include the training on norms and standards. We are targeting 300 unemployed and retrenched youth, and we will be looking at beneficiaries from the uh, Northwest, Free State, and Northern Cape. The Wine Service Training Program as well will include the COVID-19 protocols. Uh, here we are targeting 252 unemployed and retrenched youth. We will be focusing on um, sourcing or recruiting learners or beneficiaries from 
KwaZulu uh, Natal and also Western K. The same with a hospitality youth program, but here we are targeting 1,000 unemployed and retrenched youth across the nine provinces. Next slide. And Chairperson, in terms of um, uh, capacity building uh, programs that we are going to be implementing to ensure that uh, the necessary skills are found in the sector, uh, the uh, women um, executive development program is, is, is underway and the 20 women, it's actually 40 a chairperson for the intake for this year and of last year, which were not able to proceed due to the disruptions of COVID-19 have been enrolled in an institution of higher learning. And as we speak, they are, they are, they are busy receiving uh, the, 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 the capacity building program. Um, in terms of the, 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 the professionalization of the chefs, uh, we are targeting 30 chefs that we are going to support through the recognition of prior learning process so that they can have the necessary qualification as professionals. Two hundred and twenty-five SMMEs, mainly targeting those that are in villages, townships and small uh, towns will be uh, trained on uh, uh, norms and protocols to ensure that they run um, a, a safe and secure uh, tourism uh, operations during COVID and also uh, beyond. So we will be targeting uh, 25 SMMEs per province. The National Tourism Careers Expo is, is, is proceeding as well, though we will, this year we will also be participating in the Provincial um, uh, Tourism Careers Expo, building up to the national one in, 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 in Kota 4. There's also a, a program that we are targeting for educators which we call the Educators Development Provinces, uh, um, a program which we are uh, looking at, at, at uh, edu educators um, uh, across the nine provinces. Uh, that should be all from my side, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. CFO. Good afternoon, Chairperson and members, Minister, Deputy Minister, DJ and colleagues. Uh, from the finances, you will see that we include the four financial years, the, the 2021, the past financial year, and then we also will then focus on the 21-22 financial year. Um, the reason why we put it in is that uh, the members can, can see the, the, the difference in our budget from the, last, the previous financial year to the, the, the year that we are in now. In the previous year, uh, we returned 1 billion rand from our budget back to National Treasury because we knew that we will not be able to, to spend all the funds. So you will see that our, our total budget in the previous year was 1.4 billion and in the 21-22 final year. Uh, administration, our program one, will receive 305 million. Tourism, research policy and international relations, 1.3 billion. Destination development, 305 million. And tourism sector support services, 400 and 56 uh, million. Uh, on the next slide, um, chairperson members, uh, interesting to, to note here is that on our compensation of employees, uh, if you look on the, over the MTF period, um, it remains constant. There's no salary increases on compensation of, of employees. We are getting 333 million rand across the three financial years. Um, then the largest component there is the transfers and subsidies, which is 1.6 billion. Uh, and that is because of our transfer payment to SA Tourism, which we will give the details when we get to program two. Uh, on the next slide, uh, administration, the breakdown where you can see the ministry management, corporate management, financial management and office accommodation. Uh, the biggest component there is a corporate management one, and I think um, 
the acting DDG has spoken to all the areas that is involved in that specific one, 55.3%. And then we've also got our office accommodation, that is our payment to public works for the renting of our head office building 45 million rand. The next slide. Uh, once again, you can see the compensation of employees across the three financial years, 151 uh, million rand across the three financial years. Goods and services, uh, 100 and also 150 million rand, 49.2%. Uh, the next one. Uh, program two, um, the one that we can take note of here is our payment to SA Tourism. Uh, you will see on the 21, 20, uh, 2021 year, we only paid 423 million and we are now back to pay 1.2 billion, uh, nearly 1.3 billion uh, to SA Tourism in the 21, 22 financial year. Uh, on the next slide, uh, compensation of employees, constant 53 million. And then our transfer payments, which include the transfer to uh, SA Tourism as well as our UNWTO uh, transfer payment uh, for our membership fees, 94.3% uh, on transfer payments for this program. The next one, destination development. Uh, the largest portion here is uh, working for tourism, which is 216 million. Um, in over the MTF, the working for tourism uh, was reduced with 540 million rand, and that money was included in the uh, tourism incentive program, in the, uh, which we will see in, in the next uh, uh, program, uh, and that was specifically for the tourism equity fund. Uh, total for this program, 305 million. Next one. Um, Compensation of, of employees, 55 million across the, the three financial years. And then uh, goods and services, which include the working for tourism, 249 million. Next one. On tourism sector support services, uh, compensation of employees, 11 million across the, the three financial years. Um, and then you will see on the tourism incentive program, there is a huge increase. And the budget for, for this year is 327 million or 774.9%. Seven, uh, next slide. Um, majority of the money is a transfer payment of a tourism incentive program, 317.5 million, 72.7%. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. I hand over to the DG. Thank you very much. Over to you, DG. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Um, in terms of the key risks that we face, um, in the main, we've got a big risk that uh, has been stated previously to the committee, um, the ability to meet transformation targets um, as a sector, not, not as a department. And we do believe that to be able to overcome part of that, we need to strengthen the monitoring part of uh, the council. Um, and then part of that would be the process that the council has embarked upon already, uh, which is to ensure that it, it has a, a, its own level of independence. The other issue would be to ensure that uh, our policy environment uh, is, is, is uh, adapting to the changes that, 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 that we are seeing and that would be adequately covered as we deal with uh, the process that the DM referred to, uh, which, 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 which uh, uh, the minister has, has, has uh, appointed a, a panel that is actually looking at that matter, and there will then be a report, and then we'll be able to take those things, taking them forward. The safe operations of the sector, uh, the norms and standards will deal with that, and we do believe that in this particular instance, um, also, the protocols that uh, the industry has uh, will, will also assist in that regard. But we see these norms and standards as that basic minimum so that uh, we, we, we have the confidence that the entire country is actually uh, adhering to, 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 to uh, this particular uh, safe uh, operations measures. 
the brand uh, of, of, of the tourism brand, uh, destination brand, um, we will have to continue to uh, manage that closely. Uh, and some of the mitigations would include, include issues around uh, the safety uh, in terms of uh, physical safety and so on. Uh, but also making sure that uh, our messaging with regards to repositioning of the brand from the marketing point of view, which uh, as you meet with Salaman Tourism, they will speak a lot more about that. Uh, and also to ensure that um, we run campaigns where we galvanize every South African uh, behind uh, the, 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 the messages. And we would ensure that we also do uh, these campaigns uh, internationally, but also do them in the region. Uh, within SADC and in the continent. The, let's move to the next one. Thank you. The other areas um, relate to uh, the impact of climate change. We do see that uh, as a factor, um, it's, it's, it's a bit long-termish, uh, but in reality, uh, Green growth uh, would would play a very big part uh, in, in in recovering of economies globally. So this is something that we pay attention to. We do have a, a vulnerability assessment that has been done and uh, adaptation measures that have been uh, proposed. Part of these obviously will be our green tourism incentive. Uh, which, uh, which, which will be able to assist in terms of uh, uh, issues around retrofitment uh, and so on. Uh, the issues around uh, the uh, negative impact of COVID on employment, uh, we probably one of the hardest hit globally, uh, as well as locally, uh, in terms of uh, the, the, when the operations are low, uh, the number of people required would also be low. So in this particular instance, what we have done is what DDG Struggle was talking about, that we would also allow uh, entry into some of our programs with regards to issues around risk killing that could allow people to actually diversify uh, what uh, was their, their initial careers. And so that would have actually been coming from being laid off as long as they fall within that youth category would also be able to provide that, uh, that level of assistance. And the issues around the oversight of uh, uh, South African tourism uh, as the entity that has got the mandate to uh, ensure that South Africa as a destination is marketed globally and also domestically. This is an area that uh, we pay uh, a lot of attention on and will continue to do so. But uh, it, it's flagged because that is the only instrument that if, if anything goes wrong there, we are not able to actually get our mandate right with regards to uh, the issues around uh, marketing. Implementation of infrastructure projects. Uh, we did report previously, honorable chairperson and honorable members, that uh, we had uh, a capacity constraints in this regard uh, and that had impacted on implementation of projects. Uh, we have uh, sourced uh, the services of the Development Bank of Southern Africa uh, to uh, assist us as the implementing agent for our infrastructure portfolio. Um, and this is uh, based on their capacity and, and uh, having built environment specialists, finance specialists, all types of specialists that are able to deal with these matters uh, in the manner that they should be dealt with. Um, on the issue of contract management, uh, we, we are emphasizing on uh, ensuring that there is greater awareness about the need for uh, proper application of provisions of the contract at the project management level. And that would assist in making sure that we do not necessarily deal with uh, issues as an after the fact, but we make sure that we evoke the necessary provisions as and when, and project managers must always at all times be aware of what are those particular provisions and when should they actually be evoked so that we do not necessarily chase after lost money, uh, so to say. 
We also would, would need to forge greater partnerships uh, with uh, tourism associations uh, and the industry at large for us to have a continuous grasp of developments within the sector, particularly as it relates to the impact of COVID-19. And this will then relate to the work that DDG Malan was talking about, where we're going to conduct those surveys. But of course, the success of this is largely dependent on the extent of uh, cooperation that we actually get from uh, the industry, so to say. Issues around monopoly and collusive practices by suppliers. Uh, we're gonna be monitoring uh, supplier patterns, uh, also making sure that rotation is implemented and, and, and also going into issues of supplier development so that in areas where we go to and we are looking for suppliers for particular services uh, and we find that it's the same people over and over again, then we should also step in to ensure that we don't actually find that particular scenario all the time when we go there. In terms of corruption, uh, we are strengthening internal controls and this is a continuous process, but we are applying consequence management. Whether it is third parties implementers, whether it is internal uh, staff uh, members um, and, and so on. So we, we, we will be continuously doing that uh, consequence management approach. Uh, that is all, and thank you very much, honorable chairs and honorable members. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister uh, uh, DM, uh, DG, uh, DDGs, and the uh, CFO uh, for the presentation. Uh, at this stage, then we will uh, give opportunity to members uh, to ask questions. Um, there will be responses from. Uh, uh, DG, DDG, uh, CFO, and then the DM and the uh, and the uh, minister. I think will uh, then summarize and close uh, the presentation. Um, can we then have uh, members? Can you indicate if you have any questions? Uh, Committee secretary can assist me. I don't see any hands at this stage. Oh, there are. Oh, Honorable uh, Moimang, followed by Honorable Boshoff, and then uh, Honorable uh, Dango. In that order, please. Honorable Moimang. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank okay. you, Chair, for the, for the opportunity uh, to engage with the presentation and uh, let me also uh, express my greetings to to the leadership of the of the department that's led by the by the minister and the and the dm and the and the administrative uh, leadership uh, chair let me start first with uh, the what the uh, the issue of tourism equity fund? Uh, I think in the in the in in, in the in, in in the presentation, I did not uh, get a sense uh, of reflection on the on the uh, on the process uh, that uh, the that uh, that has been engaged upon by this Afri Afri Forum to interdict the, the tourism equity fund. Uh, I'm not just to whether is that process still on or has there been any settlement uh, between the department and the and the uh, and the litigants. At this point is is, is important in the sense that uh, I think on the uh, On, on the presentation by the by the CFO, uh, the there was referral to to uh, working for tourism budget reduction, uh, and uh, it was uh, attributed to to the establishment uh, of the tourism equity fund. 
and uh, and that uh, uh, also tourism, I think tourism incentive program. Uh, so my question will be, uh, uh, if indeed uh, the litigation is still uh, is, is still an ongoing process, uh, what are the terms of the of 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 of, of, of the of of, of the uh, uh, interdict? Uh, does it uh, also have uh, an impact on the on the uh, tourism transformation fund, or does it also have uh, an impact on the working for tourism? Uh, I think it's quite critical in the sense that uh, uh, we need to get a sense as to as to as to whether the department uh, is contesting, uh, which I believe that it must do. Uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, uh, the, the the program of transformation is alluded to by the DM uh, and also uh, both program uh, three and program four uh, are not halted. So I think it's uh, if one can just get clarity on that. Uh, the the second point, teacher, is to is to uh, get a sense in terms of, uh, of, 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 of of the extent to which uh, uh, the DG's referral to uh, the challenges with regard to project management. This uh, infrastructure program, program at, at, at what level is it, uh, is it, is, is it implemented? Uh, is it implemented uh, through the South African tourism or is it uh, a program that is uh, implemented by the department? Uh, but of course, mindful of the fact that uh, the, the DG was, uh, was, was honest in terms of uh, uh, alluding to the fact that this point of uh, uh, challenges around project management was raised in the past with regard to the infrastructure implementation. And uh, he did indicate that uh, they have roped in a TBSA uh, as an implementing agent. So my question in relation to this point, Chair, is as to whether uh, is this a short-term stop gap measure or is it a long-term? Uh, uh, because uh, I would uh, move from the point that uh, uh, Outsourcing uh, definitely must be must be an interim uh, program just to sort of uh, mitigate the the challenges that uh, that the DG has indicated uh, as as part and parcel of uh, 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 our commitment to building a capable and development of state. I want to believe that in-house capacity is quite important. Just want to get a sense as to whether is there any plan to to uh, build the in-house capacity around project management so that we don't have to, to rely on, on the TBC. Uh, I, I want to believe that TBC at some point, it will be overstretched because they are also an integral part of the, of the infrastructure uh, development program that is beheaded by both the Department of Public Works and also the, uh, the, the, the uh, presidential Infrastructure unit. Uh, the, the the last point Chair, that I want that that, 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 I, that I want to know the last the the, the last two points uh, is with regard to the uh, point that the ministers alluded to around uh, what are the key strategic theme of uh, planning for recovery. Uh, which uh, he has outlined around as, as, as centered around the reigniting demand, rejuvenation, supply, and also strengthening and enabling capability. Uh, my question, my question, Chair, uh, if uh, emphasis is shifting towards domestic demand, given the, the uncertainty around around the 
the, the pandemic globally. The fact that uh, uh, the sector was the most uh, hardest hit uh, and uh, uh, it was the last to, 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 it was the first to close and the last to, to open. The, the, the question that I want to, 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 to ask is with regard to the, the budget of the South African Tourism Fund because 1.46 billion is transferred subsidies to this entity. Is this entity focused mainly uh, on uh, domestic uh, or uh, majority of this program is it centered around uh, uh, looking uh, around globally? Because if the emphasis is that we need to reorientate our sector towards to, towards uh, uh, rejuvenating and igniting domestic demand, it means that uh, even its uh, strategic orientation has to shift. Uh, the last one, Chair, is around the, the engagement that we had uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the team, uh, uh, with the provinces and also the, the local municipality. Uh, I appreciate a number of initiatives that, uh, that, 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 that were outlined, uh, flat uh, across the country in various provinces. But I think key to that, I think it's, uh, it's, 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 it's one of the, 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 the uh, uh, distinguishing features that we have always uh, 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 talked about, that the need to strengthen coordination and capacity at local level, so that we are then able to ensure that uh, uh, whether it is through the, the local economic development, whether it is through tourism, tourism as an integral part of the local economic development, they did not see it as, a, as, 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 as an unfunded mandate. It becomes important that uh, a much more closer, much more closer uh, uh, monitoring and evaluation and also coordination around local level within the emphasis of, uh, of, of, of small dorms and villages uh, is given uh, to, 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 to the local municipality because that is where things are happening. But more than that, I think uh, within the model of the district development, uh, the coordination around the three spheres, putting much more emphasis, emphasis at local level is quite important. So therefore, I, 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 I'm more interested to get a sense in terms of uh, uh, what, uh, what, 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 what are the plans in terms of ensuring that uh, the recommendations that, we, that, 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 that were fashioned from the engagement that we had with the department around coordination uh, across the three spheres is indeed taken forward. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Minister and the team. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Moimank. Uh, Honorable Osha. Thank you very much, Chair, and good afternoon to the Minister and Deputy Minister, and a very happy belated birthday to you, Minister. Um, I need you get some information with regard to the policy review process under program two. Has it started yet? And if so, what is the outcome? Does the review panel have the right to speak on quality assurance and grading of establishments? Would this panel be allowed to make recommendations on possible tax breaks? Or is this um, only something that can be done by treasury? We need to know this because everybody is suffering under these trying times. And then with regard to that question, when does the department envisage receiving the full final proposals for the minister's consideration? And how long after this will the final proposals be gazetted for public participation? Second question is, um, Honorable Moyamang touched on um, collaborations between departments, and I'd just like to know as well whether DOT has had any collaborations or discussions with stakeholders like COCTA, Roads Department, Environmental Department, and the SAPs, because many of our smaller towns are losing valuable income due to the state of the roads and the lack of infrastructure in the smaller towns, especially um, with reference to electricity and water supply and the continuous flow of raw sewage through towns. This is chasing potential tourist, um, tourists away from our towns. 
and safety as well is a big issue. Over the weekend, Kraskop, for instance, had a huge ATM bombing where the police were locked up and um, the perpetrators got away with quite a bit of money. And it's not good for Kraskop and small towns when these things happen. It also chases away the um, possible tourists. So if we could have any report on collaborations between DOT and these um, other departments. And then um, with regard to the third wave, we all know it is upon us. Um, the free, stra free state is in it and Gauteng, Gauteng is alluding to seeing a spike in cases due to non-compliance at entertainment venues, et cetera, et cetera. Northwest and KZN are also speaking of a possible third wave. What I'd like to know is, has the um, department taken any measures to enlighten domestic tourists of these areas and requesting them to stay away for protection purposes? We all know that the only way we can possibly stop the spread is by population immunity, herd immunity. But unfortunately, we are way behind in this regard. Then I'd also like to know what is being done with visitors from abroad. Do they need to prove that they have been vaccinated? And if so, do they still need to be quarantined for a certain period? Again, we sit um, with our population immunity and it remains a risk for travelers, be it for business or tourism um, vacations. Um, we really cannot sit back and wait for the NCCC, um, the National Command Council, to decide for us. Can I also then find out from the department what steps have been taken to assist small tourism startups and to also ensure that small businesses are revived? And how many businesses received the COVID-19 relief and what was the amount given to each of these businesses? I'd like to know what bilateral discussions has the minister had with other countries and who are these countries with regard to matters relating to tourism that is important to them and to us? And has the minister signed any MOUs? And if so, what do these MOUs entail? And Chair, my last question is on the Numbigate project. I'd like to know which of the neighboring areas will benefit from this project. And it would be great if the select committee could go and do oversight at these various projects, not just the Numbigate one, but the others that were also mentioned in the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Boshoff. Uh, Honorable Dango. Thank you, Chairperson. I will be brief. <clears throat> Uh, to the department and the minister, have we considered training uh, people, the, uh, especially Durko officials, when they go out to actually understand tourism and how to promote tourism? Are there training sessions for the senior leadership, for ambassadors and consul generals, but also training for the third and fourth and fifth secretaries that sometimes go out, that I think we should consider a training program for them. For those that are out already, if, when they come back on their leave is to take possibly three days extra and negotiate with Dirko. So they come in for three days for training um, into the tourism uh, ministry or uh, a tourism uh, facility. Having said that, I, from experience, uh, Chairperson, I was sitting once and listening to a tourism uh, promotion in Saudi Arabia. The person had just come from uh, Europe and started to sell the winelands in Saudi Arabia. I think it was the wrong message. Fortunately, the free state tourism were there and they sold family values. I think it's important that we understand our markets we understand the large markets and the large spenders uh, and attract those large spenders uh, into South Africa. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Dango. Um, are there any other members uh, like to ask questions? 
Okay, maybe from uh, from my side, uh, I would like also to thank again uh, the presentation. Uh, uh, what I also like, uh, especially with program one, uh, are the details of uh, uh, the output uh, indicators. Uh, if I had uh, correctly, there are about 12 of them. Um, what I like is that we we sometimes use a, a, it as a baseline uh, for when we ask questions uh, to to other departments. Um, most other departments, they when it comes to that uh, program, program one, uh, they will focus around maybe three areas: uh, 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 the financial target, uh, that of unqualified. Uh, audit opinion and the vacancy rate. Uh, I think the other one will be the the, the communication. Uh, maybe those three. But it, with regard to the department, there are about twelve uh, output indicators. So uh, we we then normally would uh, ask questions using uh, 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 the the Department of Tourism uh, outcome indicator as a basis for. A question that we pose uh, uh, to to other departments. So I'd like to commend the the, the department from uh, for going to details with regard to those uh, uh, output uh, indicators. Because some of the department they will just some of these areas will be maybe under uh, HR, especially uh, issues that relate to equity, uh, issues of employment equity, yeah, and so forth. Um, but what I did not uh, see is one of the output indicators under corporate uh, uh, management is the this target uh, that the president talked about in the sauna. I, I think even at the launch of uh, the TF, uh, if my memory serves me well, uh, that of uh, forty percent uh, procurement of uh, uh, women and youth owned. Uh, businesses or enterprises. Uh, you correct me if uh, it is a, a I saw that the thirty percent one on small businesses, uh, but uh, there is no specific one uh, on women uh, and youth-owned uh, 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 businesses, which is a uh, forty percent. Um, I think some of my question will also be similar to those of uh, the honourable. Uh, uh, Boshoff, um, when you look at the tourism sector recovery plan, it talks about uh, igniting uh, the domestic and uh, and the uh, international uh, 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 visits. Um, the, the, I don't know uh, how many countries, uh, Minister, <coughs> uh, that have uh, banned uh, South Africa uh, because of the variant. Uh, that was discovered in in South Africa, and also wh what is it that perhaps the department and uh, maybe with the Department of Health are doing to convince uh, the countries uh, about uh, visiting South Africa, and also explaining uh, this uh, variant uh, that was because uh, th there's. Uh, when it comes to this variant, uh, uh, variant uh, uh, some countries call it the South African uh, variant, yet it was discovered in South Africa, not that it is a South African uh, variant. So uh, is there anything, maybe it's linked to the issue that uh, uh, Honorable Boshoff is asking about a uh, 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 memorandum of understanding uh, with uh, any of these countries in terms of explaining uh, things like this variant, variant, but also generally, um, how does then the ban on, on, on South Africa affect uh, the international uh, uh, visits uh, to the country? Um, the other question also relate to the, the tourism sector recovery plan uh, being part uh, of the uh, ERRP. Uh, the economic and uh, reconstruction recovery plan, whether there are any additional resources uh, to ensure that we implement uh, 
uh, this the tourism sector recovery plan. I know that the CFO was saying that uh, there was a uh, one billion that uh, was sent back to treasury, and that one billion is now back. But that one billion was actually part of uh, the budget of the uh, of the department before the the COVID nineteen. So in terms of the budget, therefore, we don't see any additional uh, amount except that one billion that was returned. So there's no additional amount with regard to the implementation of this uh, tourism sector recovery plan. Uh, I don't know if, therefore, there will be an, any other uh, uh, additional funding uh, with regard to uh, this particular plan together with the uh, ERR plan. Um, the, the issue of uh, the TEF, Though we're part of the launch, uh, it has not yet been uh, formally uh, presented to the select committee. I know it has been presented to the NA, but in terms of our own program, uh, Minister, we, it's part of our program. We will be inviting the department at some stage uh, to brief uh, uh, the committee. Uh, but uh, we are aware uh, in terms of the media uh, but uh, that uh, there are challenges uh, so I think this one relate to the risk or the key risk that uh, uh, the DG was talking about. To what extent, therefore, uh, with regard to the transformation, the question that uh, Honorable Moiman uh, asked, uh, to what extent uh, is this going to affect uh, the, the transformation uh, of, the, of the sector, uh, the tourism sector? Um, I think at some stage, uh, Minister, in, in terms of uh, stimulating the domestic demand, you you once uh, announced uh, the, that you you considering uh, the issue of uh, prices, uh, that there should be prices for uh, domestic and uh, also different price uh, for for the international. Uh, I, how how far is that uh, idea in terms of uh, uh, implementation? Uh, just on the on the on the issue of the uh, destination development, um, particularly with regard to the infrastructure maintenance, uh, in, in some provinces you find uh, last year, and in fact in twenty nineteen, as part of our uh, the provincial uh, visit uh, the program that we have uh, as, as, as an NCOP. Um, I was part of the group that went to uh, Arwal North. Uh, the, there's a tourist attraction destination in, in which is kind of like uh, dilapidated. You can see that it was a, a, a very nice uh, place. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure then what is a process of uh, on and also the role of the department nationally. Uh, I'm, I'm raising this uh, with regard to the number of uh, a project that uh, under the destination uh, 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 development uh, program. I, how how do you identify those uh, projects that uh, you're focusing on in terms of uh, uh, infrastructure maintenance? Is the I mean the province are the provinces giving you those uh, uh, projects or those uh, 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 tourism uh, attraction, or you identify them yourself? Because I, I was worried about this one of uh, um, uh, Alwa North, uh, but at, at some stage in the last uh, term, we we, we visited uh, in Pumalanga. We found uh, there was also another one. And a, a, a tourist attraction that was also dilapidated. Uh, I don't know whether it, how that then it fits in with regard to the this infrastructure uh, maintenance uh, program. So those are the areas I just wanted to, to to highlight. Otherwise, I'm very happy with the with the presentation. Thank you, uh, Minister and uh, Deputy Minister and the TG and TDGs. If you can get, uh, I know you you will summarize it uh, at the last uh, uh, minister. So I'll hand over back to the DG, and then uh, uh, he will then allocate uh, uh, to other DGs in terms of the responses. Thank you.
DG. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. I'm going to request that the DDGs um, take the questions from program one all the way to program four. Then I will cover areas that would not have been covered by themselves uh, and then hand over back to the DM. Yeah. Um, th th thank you, uh, DG, and uh, thanks for the compliment, uh, Honorable Chair from Corporate uh, Management. On the 40% target for youth, women, and people with disabilities, the target has been uh, cascaded down to the business plan. And that's mainly because a fair amount of that is already embedded in the 30% of SMEs. And we do not want to stretch the, the, the target to, to more numbers. So it's, it's actually in the business plan of the, of, the, of the supply chain and cuts across all the, all the branches because they must make us meet that target. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next program. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. There's quite a number of, of questions, I think, that's um, directed to, to Program 2. I think I will start with Honorable Moe um, he, he His question was around the focus of South African tourism. I'm sure, Honorable Moemang, when, when South African tourism come and, and present the, the APP, they will provide more detail. But there is um, quite a, a, a big focus on, the, on domestic tourism within the current uh, financial year. There is still a focus. They retain the focus on international, but the, uh, the, the, the biggest part of, of, of the uh, focus and priority is, is on on domestic tourism, noting um, the, 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 the facts that I think honorable members have, have mentioned around the impact of, of COVID and travel restrictions and so on. Um, honorable Bosov asked about the, uh, the policy, the review of the policy and whether it has started. Yes, honorable Bosov, uh, the process has started with the appointment of the advisory panel um, that minister appointed last year. Um, they are busy with, with consultations. Um, and as I uh, uh, presented, uh, we are targeting a green paper uh, to be developed by the end of the financial year, which means that during the financial year, the panel will have to present their policy proposals to minister uh, for her consideration. Um, just to indicate that uh, the matter around the tax breaks, it is indeed a, a treasury matter, but uh, the matter around quality assurance and the grading is, is a matter that they can um, look into. Um, with regard to MOUs, the department, um, or South Africa, let me rather say, has signed a number of, of MOUs with with countries um, on the development and promotion of tourism historic, historically. And there is also a number of, of MOUs uh, in that regard that is ready for, for signature between uh, the two countries. Um, we have prioritized those MOUs that are ready um, to, to be signed as soon as, as, as possible. Um, in terms of bilaterals, I'm sure Minister will, might also speak to that, but during, um, I would say, last year and this year, Minister had a number of discussions, included, including with the Ambassador of, of Germany, the USA, um, UAE. It, it depends on, on the matter at hand um, uh, during a specific uh, a time, and those bilaterals are continuing. It hasn't um, ended. Those are uh, bilaterals that, that's continuing. Um, in terms of Honorable Dongo, in terms of the training of, of DERCO officials, yes, indeed. Um, we are um, together with South African tourism training uh, on, 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 on all levels from ambassadors that are being posted to uh, other officials on requests from, from DERCO, we do, um, we, we do uh, participate in the training program from, uh, for those uh, officials that are posted. Um, 
Honorable K, you asked about additional resources in terms of the tourism sector recovery plan. I think the, the CFO was quite um, uh, uh, clear when he said there's, there's no additional funding. So we didn't receive any additional funding. What we did do is to align our APPs, that is us and South African tourism, to the actions that is relevant or that is relevant for implementation by South African tourism and the department to ensure that the funds that we do have is is um, spent in in driving the implementation of of the um, of the tourism sector recovery plan. Uh, in terms of honourable chair, you also asked about the impact of of closed borders. Perhaps just to, to, to in, in conclusion, indicate that South Africa in, in February this year saw a 88.7% decrease in tourist arrivals compared to the same month last, last year. So year on year in February, 88.7% decrease in tourist arrivals, which is in line with um, what we see international. Internationally, we saw a 87% decline in, in January compared to, to the previous year. So there is a, a huge impact in terms of tourist arrivals to, to South Africa. Thank you very much. I think those, I hope I touch on all of them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next program. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Um, I will talk to the questions raised for destination development. I think the first question was related to um, the plan around in-house capacity. And I think with regards to this, I wanna to speak to two elements. The one element is actually having built environment professionals, that is engineers, quantity surveyors, et cetera. The second element of course, is then looking at project management and contract management capacity. So with regards to the first element of whether the department has plans to hire in built environment professionals. I, I don't believe that this is something the department will do. And into the future, I do think that this is a function um, of, of that will be outsourced, um, specifically because it's not a function that we need every day. Um, and also those resources do come in at a, um, at a significant cost. But with regards to the, the project and contract management element of work, um, we, we have in the department provided a specific training to our various teams on contract and project management. Uh, some teams who are part of our project management unit have in fact gone through um, the um, university courses on, on becoming certified project managers. And with regards to the work that we're doing with the DBSA, there is certainly a plan around skills transfer for project management and contract management capacity in the department itself. So we are building the project management and uh, the actual contract management capacity, but into the long term, I do think that built environment professionals is something that we will, we, we will outsource as, as, as a function. Um, with regards then to the question from Honorable Boshoff um, about the Numbi Gate project and which communities are, um, you know, going to be uh, beneficiaries of whatever programs we put in place there. There are two communities that surround the Numbi Gate project. Um, those are the Mahule community and the Mdluli communities. And, and the work that we're doing at the moment is stakeholder engagement in order to understand the specific uh, needs and requirements. Both communities uh, do have tourism facilities that are in, in need of uh, support um, and, and maintenance. And so those are the, the neighboring communities that we will work with in, in that area. And then honorable uh, chairperson, your question with regards to the selection of projects for the maintenance program, this was done in discussion and consultation with provinces. Uh, provinces then provided to us those um, um, tourism assets that they believe are very highly visited, but are in fact in need of maintenance and repair. 
And we're now working with those provincial teams and the DBSA teams to do conditional assessments on those properties and define the kinds of maintenance work required. So it's definitely a consultative process um, in, in order to identify them. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. I Thank think you. those are all the questions. Okay. Uh, for the program, are there any questions to respond to? Yes, thank you, Chairperson. There were just two questions uh, that were uh, um, directed to Program 4. The first one being uh, strengthening the capacity of um, a local government, followed by the one on the COVID-19 uh, relief fund. Uh, okay. That is the tourism relief fund. Uh, the, the first one, uh, Chairperson, we, we do have a... A, 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 a plan, a deliverable, though it is in our business plan, but um, we have had it in our uh, APP for, for some time now. And uh, the fact that it is now in the business plan doesn't mean it is not uh, uh, that important. But the importance of uh, these two programs that I will deal with is, is really intended at making sure that um, a, 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 a tourism and the, 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 the the, the local government is strengthened to be able to um, make um, uh, tourism thrive in their own uh, or respective um, uh, 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 jurisdiction. The first one is the peer learning network where we are um, uh, providing a platform for tourism practitioners at local government uh, to interact with one another, to be able to share experiences and and, and be able to share expertise in terms of how they are managing uh, the growth and development of tourism in their in their in their in their locality. Um, it, it is um, a, a, a project that we are driving uh, every now and then to call uh, the practitioners to come together and be able to share uh, experiences. And the, the next one will be where together with a, a, a local government, we galvanize around the industry to come around and we are able to um, uh, expose them to uh, uh, what we are offering. Um, uh, uh, our programs, both at, uh, at, 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 at the departmental level and also a local government will be coming in to showcase what they are offering for, for the industry. That is your private sector regarding um, uh, 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 programs that they will have for, 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 for businesses to, to, to tap into. Most of our programs, if not all, a uh, chairperson and members are geared towards um, locals. Your, the skills development programs, um, um, uh, we, we partner with, with, with provinces in terms of um, uh, uh, how best to, to be able to recruit um, uh, um, uh, uh, beneficiaries. The monitors program as well, there's, 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 there's an element where uh, province, provinces play, play, play a role in terms of identifying um, areas where monitors could be could be placed um, and most of the learners and uh, or the beneficiaries are sourced from uh, the, the, the local local base and again there are instances where in the uh, uh, in these programs we have uh, especially in the tourism monitors program and um, the um, uh, provincial tourism agencies are appointed to 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 to, to manage or implement uh, departmental programs. We, in, with regards to the COVID-19 relief fund, the question was very direct. Um, the, the size of the fund was uh, 200 million. We were able to support 4,000 businesses uh, each at uh, 50,000 rents. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, DG? Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I would I would want to just to start to start where uh, DDG Strava ended uh, and declare that there is one business that was unfortunately overpaid by uh, fifty thousand rands. So all the businesses were getting fifty. There's one business that got overpaid by fifty thousand rands. 
we have instituted all the necessary processes to recover that money, which then allows us to be able to say uh, properly to, 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 to the committee that we paid 4,000 businesses. Uh, and, those, uh, we, we, and those businesses were getting 50,000 rands each. Um, Honorable Chairperson, the, the Tourism Equity Fund, we are currently under interdict uh, not to proceed with uh, uh, the processing of applications or taking applications, all those types of processes, until the court processes around it are concluded. Uh, I would then submit that we request that we, we, we do not go into its detail as currently it is a matter that is before the courts. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Then on, on, on matters uh, related to, to uh, I think, the, 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 the capacity uh, uh, to, to be able to deal with the projects and so on, um, it, it's, it's really focused on the, the department and it is focused on uh, what DDG Chetia uh, spoke to. Um, we, we had challenges uh, with uh, getting projects, uh, infrastructure projects completed uh, on time. Uh, we had problems with completing them uh, with the requisite quality. We had problems with completing them within uh, the, the, the costs as, as originally envisaged. So, so we do believe that this process that we have embarked on is going to help us to be able to achieve these three aspects. Um, and we will then be able to move forward uh, with 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 uh, with with that that level of uh, understanding. Then, on the issues uh, around the, the 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 recovery plan, in the main, uh, we we are looking at uh, the protection and rejuvenation of supply side, and how we are dealing with that all this maintenance that we are talking about is to ensure that by the time we actually come to full recovery, the, the main base, uh, particularly all these big attractions which happen to be in the state's hands are not dilapidated to the point that we actually don't have a product in place. So that is the kind of approach that we, we have taken in this regard. We are also looking at the stimulation of demand and honorable members may have actually uh, seen uh, the campaign that that uh, minister was championing uh, from the forefront with the support of the DM and and uh, across the country, the length and breadth of the country, dealing with uh, uh, ensuring that the domestic tourism message is it's well received, and we actually begin to see benefits out of that particular uh, uh, message with regards to to the recovery. Uh, so, so that 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 is that has actually already uh, been been put in place. Of course, when when SAT comes, it would also then outline what then would happen with regards to uh, the supply from the point of view of uh, regional as well as uh, uh, international, and then the strengthening of the enabling capacity. And this would also link to uh, the aspects, as an example, of how we're going to be working together with home affairs on the issues around e-visas, uh, how we're gonna be working together with uh, SAPS on, on issues of safety and so on. And I would want to state that there is greater cooperation within government uh, at all levels uh, to ensure that we get this recovery going. Uh, before Minister took the plan to, 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 to cabinet for, for cabinet approval, the plan went through the MinMEC and the MinMEC, this participation of uh, local government there, represented by Salgam, uh, and all the MECs were there, who were, who were there. And, and that then got uh, support to say, we are all behind this and let the minister then take this for approval. And it was actually developed with full cooperation of industry at large. So this is why Minister Cohen did tourism sector recovery plan. So we see it as a plan for all of tourism. In terms of the, 
the, the, the issues related to, to uh, safety in particular. Um, our safety program, which is a big partnership with South African Police Services, as well as the industry, it has got three pillars. One of the pillars is preventative measures. They include visibility and so on. And we prioritize high volume areas that we would be able to uh, deal with issues of uh, prevention and so on. Um, of course, incidents in the country broadly uh, of crime, just like any other country, uh, there will be an incident here, there will be an incident there, such would okay. But these big attractions and all areas that have got volumes of a, a, a traffic that goes there with regards to tourists, there is that particular aspect that we put in place. The second aspect to it is uh, the, the extent of reaction when something has happened. And the monitors on the ground will then let the, 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 the necessary uh, system to be able to kick in. Um, and the last one is once those things have happened, how then do we make sure that there is some sort of uh, an after after incident support that is provided, and this is where the linkage is also with the, the embassies and so on comes in. So they, I, I wouldn't necessarily want to then go into tactical aspects of it, but this is broadly what it it is able to to cover in that regard. The 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 honourable chairman, one of the things that we 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 have relied upon has been the wisdom of. Uh, the, 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 the scientists that advise uh, the Minister of Health. So they, they direct us in a way in terms of how we should be able to, to deal with matters of prevention. And that gets to be translated into uh, the, the regulations in terms of the Disaster Management Act and subsequently the directions that get issued by the minister from time to time in relation to that particular implementation. Now, that has actually worked for us, and this is what got us to be able to reopen uh, much earlier than we had anticipated in the previous year and be able to then commence with some of those domestic activities and so on. So we do believe that we should use that formula because it has worked. Now, when it comes to issues of immunity, um, the debate is out there. There's been uh, very clear indications that there are countries with uh, much more vaccines uh, that, that, that they are able to move so fast and so on. There are issues related to pricing and all those types of issues and so on. Um, and, and it is important for us to reach our head immunity. And I do believe that that will be the time that would assist us to be able to say, we are safe here from our side and anybody who comes here, we are not so worried that is going to be spreading this. And I think we will get to that point. Um, the announcements have been made and I don't think I would want to repeat those. We know what the information is with regards to the vaccination issues, which was actually uh, outlined by, by, by the Minister of Health. In terms of the, 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 the there is a matter that was raised by Honorable Dango, I think we have taken note of that uh, with regards to the relevance of a message uh, in instances where a message might offend a particular audience, unaware and so on. Um, some of these issues have now been taken into account by South African tourism in their segmentation approach to go into in-depth understanding of cultural dynamics as well as uh, historical dynamics so that they, and, and, and all other dynamics, social, political, and so on, so that they understand the environment and not necessarily uh, have messages that could actually conflict with uh, the, 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 what those people whom we are trying to attract believe in. Um, and and, and that, that process uh, then informs uh, how they then approach the market and so on. But we take note that it is important to have that level of relevance. Um, there's no additional money or Jefferson that comes with uh, the ERRP. Um, we, we have to ensure that because it is the priority in the country, just as the tourism sector recovery plan is the priority in the country when it comes to tourism, 
we align our own APP fully and make sure that it actually speaks to those things. Um, in fact, if I may say, Minister's directive to us was very clear that if you bring us, you bring me a, an APP, be it ourselves as the Department of uh, South African Tourism, an APP that is not showing me how you're going to implement the economic recovery plan and how you're going to implement economic reconstruction and recovery plan, as well as uh, the, 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 the tourism sector recovery plan. He, he, she's not going to, to, to even uh, consider it. We will have to be sent back. So this plan that we are bringing today is fully aligned to these two and the resources then are allocated to the implementation of those two. I will then hand over to the DM. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, DM. I think we, your network is very bad. We, we can't hear you. You can't hear me. Maybe we should uh, give it to the, to the minister. No, no, that's fine. fine. Yeah, really struggling to hear. Even when you were giving the opening remarks, uh, there, there was uh, some problem, but we could still hear you. Uh, but it's worse now. No, no, that's no, fine. fine. Okay, thanks. Uh, Minister? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, let me appreciate the DM um, and the DGN team, the DGs who presented and responded to the issues. Thank you, honorable members, for your well wishes. I really appreciate Chairperson and all members. Um, um, coming to the issue, I think quite a number of issues have been responded to. Uh, coming to firstly to the issue around um, the issues on recovery. I think Honorable Mwimang raised whether we want to focus on domestic and maybe perhaps I think from his, his side, he was sensing some level of a uh, disjuncture. What we are trying to do, we are promoting domestic tourism as part of recovery as the first phase. Then there is an area of international marketing because we understand that long term, we've got to be able one, to defend the markets that we exist in, two, to be able to retain the source markets, but also three, to penetrate new areas. That's why spending on international markets cannot be withdrawn completely. So there will be spending in that so that when we recover, we are still able to have international markets participating. So that's where the issue, the balance you are finding that would push domestic tourism as the current way of sustaining the sector, but also supporting the international one. Um, yes, in terms of, I think DDG spoke about the, DDG Malan spoke about the issues on, on policy review. Our intention indeed is to make sure that the policy review has, that's why we put experts so that we don't just put a draft document without being thoroughly thought through, um, but also in terms of ensuring as they draft now, they are having consultation and discussions with the various sectors, uh, sector players, so that they can be able to say, these are the areas that we think should be coming through. So you have the benefit, so we'll have as the department and the sector, the benefit of actually driving and developing a policy inclusively with everybody else. So that's where the issue is quite nice. And that's how we've done it with the tourism sector recovery plan as the DG has explained. So quite a number of issues will come in. Members of the public would be obviously as well expected to make their inputs. We'll look into that. Is it within our policy framework where we can be able to input what is being proposed and look at that and then be able to, to respond. So we do encourage as part of the process, we are able to engage. The issues around that wave, um, honorable members. Yes, we are cognizant that there is a threat. It's reality. Minister Mkiza has been public in terms of um, indicating his concerns. I think what we need to do, all of us, is continue in our messaging to say South Africans at times, when they hear we are at level one, they think the COVID pandemic is gone. Now, emphasizing the message of continuously wearing our mask social distancing and sanitizing or washing our hands is very important. 
our communities, all of us in our constituencies, we do see some level of non-compliance, which becomes a threat because you would find that as we continue to have this pandemic growing and districts are being monitored, by the way, from NCCC, to see which districts are in threat and also requesting the district champions to be able to drive the communication message and to be able to enforce that we are not yet out of the woods. And therefore, even the issue of learning out of international uh, trends where countries are facing the wave, what has caused that? What are the challenges so that as South Africa, we are prepared and we can deal with it. So from the tourism point of view, we work together within that team. We emphasize our support in terms of ensuring that there is a balance. We have not moved away from the balance of saving lives and saving livelihoods. We continue with the risk adjusted strategy and there is a need for all of us to remain cautious and for South Africans to take note that yes, indeed, there is a possibility that third wave can be more dangerous. There is a possibility that third wave can have more numbers. What is it that we all, because we all have a role to play. How do we support government? How do we ensure that we don't compromise our frontline staff in terms of health practitioners in how we conduct ourselves and, and be responsible? So there is work that has been done. We are continuing in terms of our work from our side. There was a question about what is it that we are doing in engaging. We've engaged various um, embassies. I've been on platforms in terms of Germany, for example, uh, in media platforms there, engaging and communicating how we're managing the variant. Uh, I think this has been raised even by chair, because what we are finding is that more chairperson is that people have a misunderstanding. So there is that notion as if people are dying in mass in South Africa. So when we start saying to them, we have high level of recovery rate, we have low mortality rate, they don't understand because they, they hear the message that the variant is more dangerous. So that's what we've been trying to do from a tourism point of view, rebuilding the brand internationally, getting into our key source markets. We've been able to engage with China as well. We've been engaging with UAE, UAE um, embassy, specifically around the Emirates flights as well. We've done seminars with Qatar Airlines as well. So there is a balance between the work that we are doing internationally and in the country as part of really rebuilding the, the image of the country and also communicating what we do. We've been even on CNN platform where we conversed about the impact of the vaccine rollout on the economy and tourism broadly. So there's been quite reach out in terms of the work that we have done, but we do believe that more work still needs to be done for us to be able to achieve what we do. We currently, if I'm not mistaken, we are sitting at 104 in terms of the countries that have banned us or listed us as uh, undesirable to visit, which is a very serious concern for us. We are hoping that as we go, we will have less numbers, but we do take cognizance that we are entering our winter season which also continues to be a threat for many countries that are observing us. So I think those are the issues, uh, Chair, that we want to respond to from our side. Lastly, I think Honorable Dango spoke about the issue of embassies. There are embassies that are champions and are driving the work that we are doing as tourism. There is coordination between ourselves and the GECO in terms of the work they've been championed. Not only DECO, there's work that is being done by DTIC. So all of us who have platforms and engagements with international platforms or bodies, we have been able to do the work and we continue under the guidance of NCCC. With those words, Chair, I want to thank members for their question and comments and also affording us the opportunity to come and share our plans for this financial year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, honorable members, I don't know if there are any follow-up questions. If not, uh, then I would like to take this opportunity then to thank the minister uh, for availing uh, herself and the team and the DM uh, to present uh, the annual performance plan of the department. As I was indicating, this then will form the basis of, of our uh, debate uh, on the 1st of June. Um, I would also want to indicate to the staff that uh, we should make sure that uh, by next week uh, we have the report ready uh, to, for adoption uh, so that in the, in the program we're supposed to uh, discuss 
and adopt all the programs on the 8th of June. That will be late because the, the, the debate will be on tourism will be on the 1st of uh, uh, June. Uh, so we need them to revise our uh, committee program. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, DM, and uh, DG and the DGGs, the CFO, and all other officials of uh, the department. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Members, uh, for availing uh, yourself. I see uh, Honorable Tim has joined us. I didn't see him earlier. Uh, we will then uh, defer uh, the report on the SEZ, uh, which we we discussed uh, in the last term, as well as the minutes of the meeting uh, of the previous or the previous uh, uh, minutes uh, to the mini meeting of the 18th. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, everybody. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, honorable members. Bye thank bye. you very much. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, comrade. Uh, can you call it a six again meeting? Study group. Uh, it's gone already.